Thank you, Attorney Sardinsky. Are we prepared to begin evidence? Yes, Your Honor. Sequestration order takes effect. I ask that the notepads be uh, made available to the jury. Ladies and gentlemen, we will allow you to take notes. Um, your notes are yours. They shouldn't be shared with anyone else. In fact, when the trial is over, we'll collect them and destroy them if you're worried about what happens to them. Uh, you will be able to consult them during deliberations, but uh, just as I had admonished you, you were not to discuss what is happening in the courtroom while the trial is proceeding and until the point where the court directs that you begin deliberations, you equally are not to share your notes with anyone else. Um, you don't have to take notes, but please do not allow your note-taking to distract from listening to what it is the testimony uh, is being presented to be. The next phase of a trial, ladies and gentlemen, is called evidence. Evidence is the portion in the trial when the information that you are to rely upon in reaching your decision is going to be presented to you. We've talked a couple of times about what evidence is. The state is the party with the burden of proof and it has the first opportunity to present evidence through witnesses that it's called. It's called the case in chief. Those witnesses will be asked questions initially by Attorney Folger and then by Attorney Swardinsky. And the information that is presented by each witness is to be considered by you in total, regardless of which of the attorneys may ask the question and the response that may have been given. It doesn't matter who called the witness. After the state concludes its case in chief, what was reversed? The defense has the opportunity to present its case in chief, to call witnesses, initially ask questions by Attorney Swardensky, and then ask questions by Attorney Folger. Again, the information presented during each witness's testimony is to be considered by you equally regardless of who asks the question. And then finally, the state, as the party with the burden of proof, has an opportunity to call what are referred to as rebuttal witnesses or to present rebuttal evidence. Rebuttal evidence is evidence that tends to uh, counter any information that may have been presented during the state, during the defense case in chief. Are we ready for the state's first witness, Attorney Folger? Yes, Your Honor. Feel free. The state will call Mandy Bartelt. You want to or you want me to? Okay. You need to remind me to do that. Okay. <laughs> forward here, uh, just in front of the witness stand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you shall give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and this you do under the penalty of perjury? I do. Thank you. Please have a seat over here to the court's right. Attorney Fulger, please go ahead. Thank you. Ma'am, could you please state your name and spell your last name? Mandy Bartelt, B-A-R-T-E-L-T. And Ms. Bartelt, are you employed? Yes. And where do you work? At the Village of Fox Crossing. And uh, is that uh, a municipal building sort of employment? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And is that located within the actual Village of Fox Crossing? Yes. Winnebago County, Wisconsin? Yes. Did it used to be called Town of Menasha? Yes, it did. All right. What is your job title? My job title is Court Manager. What are some duties of the Court Manager? Um, on a daily basis, I take in all payments, I do drawer deposits, um, I take care of all the citations, I go to court, um, any budget issues I take care of. Do you have a supervisor? Yes. And uh, what is the title of that supervisor? Um, the judge. Does the judge in that position have any direct boss or supervisor? Not in um, the village of Fox Crossing, no. How long have you been employed in that capacity? Since May 16 of 2016. And who hired you? Mr. Kaczynski. Can you see him in the courtroom today? Yes. Can you tell me where he is seated and generally what he's wearing? Um, he's seated at the defense table and he's wearing a blue colored suit. 
Is he the individual two persons to my left? That's correct. I'd ask that the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant. The record will so reflect. Thank you. Now, Mandy, what does an average week look like for your job? As in, like, my workload? How many hours a week do you work? Where are you primarily? That sort of thing. Um, I work a 40-hour work week. I work Monday through Friday. Um, most Friday afternoons I do have off, um, but still get my 40 hours in. Um, three weeks during the month um, we have court, and we have court on Thursday evenings. And how long are you typically in court on Thursday evenings? Um, approximately about 6 to 7.30. Now, generally speaking, the average week of, of this job, how often do you see a judge in this job? Um, would be on Thursday nights. So it's not typical to see the judge more than that? No. Now, you indicated you were hired in May of 2016. <laughs> did you know Len Kaczynski before you were hired? I did. And how did you know him? Um, I, at my previous employment, I knew him in the attorney role. And did you know him very well? I would say just a casual casual acquaintance. Okay. Um, now during your interactions with him before you were hired, how did you find him to behave? What was his personality like? I mean, he was very nice to me. Um, I had no, no issues with him. Um, I had conversation and I mean, he was fine. Okay. Um, would I be incorrect if I said he was somewhat quirky? That would, no, you would not be incorrect. Um, did that quirky personality ever make you uncomfortable initially when you were hired? No. Okay. Now, back when you were hired, was anything going on in Mr. Kaczynski's life that took him away from that job as judge? Yes, he had some um, medical issues um, that he, as I had started there in May, um, he had, a, um, I would say, approximately a few months off after I started there. Now, while he was undergoing these medical issues, did you continue to correspond and communicate with him? Yes, that's correct. And um, what was the primary way that you communicated with him? Through email, because he was not in the area. Were you also Facebook friends with him? Yes. Did you com communicate through that at all? Yes. And how would you describe your contact with him while he was hospitalized? I would say it was upbeat. I would um, support him through his um, medical issues, uh, casual friendship, um, spoke about uh, briefly about home lives, um, Nothing in detail, but it was um, basic, I, I, I would say, acquaintance um, that you would just talk about home or work or you'd mix the two between home and work. And, and did your mother also have contact with him through Facebook? Did who? Your mother. Um, he had friended um, my mother because when um, he was very ill, I mean, very ill. Um, my family had sent him a formal prayer. So yes, um, and after um, my family had sent him a prayer, um, Mr. Kaczynski thought he would thank my family for doing so and found my mother on Facebook and friended her. Now, during this time period, let's say, May of 2016 to, I don't know, February of 2017. Did you consider Len Kaczynski a friend? I would say he was a friend, and he was, I mean, friend and boss, absolutely, and we had great communication. Now, I want to jump forward to spring of 2017. Was the defendant back to work at that time? In, in fe February of uh, 2017? Is that when he came back? Yes, is when he came, but he... Um, he had went in for a few months, and then he had gotten out, and then in December he went back in, and then he was out in February of 2017. So December of 2016 
to February of 2017. He came back in February of 2017. And were you pleased to see him back as your boss? Yes, and words of encouragement because he still wasn't doing very well. Now, <coughs> did that happiness to see him ever change? As time went on, yes. And did Mr. Kaczynski do anything that made you uncomfortable? As time went on, absolutely. Can you talk about um, any of those occasions that you were somewhat uncomfortable with his actions? Um, I, and I'm trying to think exactly when it all took place. It was when he had come back from the hospital in February of 2017. He seemed to be, and, and I was there, I was encouraging him to get better and hope he does well and backing him, but he seemed to be very persistent on he had to come into the workplace and he had to come in and see me. And as time went on, um, one of the first incidents was that kind of came to my mind. I, it w I thought, well, that was strange is when um, my husband and I, we went on vacation and he had decided that he would put on Facebook while we were gone, which I don't like to do, um, but while we were gone to state that um, we were on our second honeymoon at an undisclosed location. And I think that's kind of when I started to, the tide was turning. I thought, well, why would he put that on Facebook? And, you know, just several things all along the way, and I don't. Well, let's talk a little bit about that second honeymoon comment. What about that made you uncomfortable exactly? It made me uncomfortable because we, we were not on a second honeymoon, um, and I, I had a few employees at Fox Crossing come up and ask me if my husband and I were okay, um, did you guys need to work on something, and so I had to go through and explain to coworkers that absolutely nothing was wrong, we were not in an undisclosed location, um, we were just on a fun trip to Florida. After that occurred, were there any other instances of, of things being maybe requested or offered by Mr. Kaczynski that made you uncomfortable? Well, it, and then as time go on, there was small incidences that would happen and he would have to come in and I think, um, if I'm not jumping ahead, um, um, in April um, I have two boys and we were having their birthday party and Mr. Kaczynski had come in two days after their birthday party and with my mother, him being Facebook friends with my mother, he had said, I saw your mother was at your house over the weekend. And I can tell you, I literally flipped around in my chair. I said, excuse me? And he said, I saw your mother was at your house over the weekend. And then I persisted to ask him how he knew where, how he knew that my mother was at my house and then he had explained um, how a, a, a Facebook nearby friends is um, what he had said at that point in time. He later on showed me at another date how he did it because I, I was unaware of that you could do such thing. Now I do want to jump backward in time just slightly. Prior to, I'll give a date, prior to April 18th, um, did he uh, convey any requests for photos of you? Um, yes. How was that done? Um, he sent an email to me and he asked me specifically for a 15 minute photo session. Um, and then I, I declined, I said no. Um, and reason being is there was a, first of all, it was very uncomfortable why he wanted to have a photo session with me. He said we can take pictures here in, in the office, because him and I share an office, as well as he said that I can go ahead and go into the courtroom, and him and I could take pictures in the courtroom. And I declined. Did he ever indicate who asked for those photos other than himself? He did indicate who asked for the photos. In the email, he had stated it was his daughter, Noelle, um, who wanted the photos and not him. Now, 
around that time, this is all prior to April 18th, correct? Yes, I, I believe so. I mean, I would have to be, it was around April 18th, yes. Did you say anything to him about, um, about these incidents? Yes, because as, it, it, and I'm, I'm sorry if I'm jumping back and forth, there's just an abundance of information. Um, but yes, uh, he, he would do other little things, like I would post, for example, I post on Facebook about maybe a muffin that I wanted to make or, um, you know, some other, maybe a smoothie or something. And he, the, one of the incidences he had stated to me when I put that on Facebook, um, he sent me an email to tell me that I should not bring in lunch, that the muffin recipe that I put on Facebook, that he was going to bring me in my lunch. And so with these incidences, as they kept going on, on April 18th, the day that we speak of, I had um, sent him, a, as I believe, a very professional email um, and asking him to keep things professional. And I, I did dance around. I was very nervous sending that email. But I sent him the email to let him know that if we can keep things professional. Permission to approach your honor? Certainly. Thank you. Neither council need to worry about asking permission to approach uh, from this point forward. Please go ahead. Thank, Thank you. you. Mandy, I'm handing you State's Exhibit 1. Do you recognize this document? Yes. And what is it? Um, I had sent him after he had sent the email telling me that he's, I should, excuse me, that he's going to bring um, the muffins in for me. I had sent him an email back and told him I got his message about the muffins. I appreciate it, but the offer is not necessary. I will bring, be bringing in my own lunch. And is that, um, did you indicate in that email, I think you already pretty much testified to it, uh, that you wanted to keep things going forward more work related? Yes, and the in the second line, um, I just told them that would help me focus here in the municipal court if we kept our relationship more work related. Um, and at that time, we were going paperless, so that was kind of my tiptoe around having our things, uh, our relationship at work being more work related and less of um, sharing personal information. Why did you feel like you had to tiptoe around it? I, I mean, he is my direct boss. Um, he is the one that oversees uh, me in my role as the court manager. Did you perceive it would go poorly if you addressed your concerns at this point? I did, yes. So, I'll just come up and ask, you indicated that um, you were concentrating on going paperless. Is that an accurate statement? Th and that is an accurate statement, yes. Is there anything inaccurate about that request of yours in, in writing? Nope, I just had asked him if we can keep things work-related because in the back of my mind, I, I was getting uneasy about what was taking place. Now, did after this email was sent, did Mr. Kitchensky make any other requests for photos of you? He did, and um, approximately a week to two weeks later, um, he had sent me another email, and um, he had said, um, and I personally don't know who um, these people are, um, but he had said the Voights, um, they would like to come in and take pictures um, on a court night. Um, and I had responded that I, I wish to not be part of that, and he had to ask our court officer if she wanted to be part of those pictures because she's in the courtroom as well. So in the meantime, we also see the um, Facebook geolocator incident occurring after you sent that April 18th email? That is correct, okay. yes. Now, at this point in time, you still haven't addressed with Mr. Kuczynski directly your concerns. Is that accurate? That is correct, besides this uh, very short email of asking to keep things professional. Okay. Now, as a result of these additional incidents after April 18th, did you seek out further assistance to, to deal with your uh, discomfort? Within the f next few weeks to come, yes. 
Um, he had kept asking, obviously, the pictures and then more meetings and um, that were non-work related, or he would throw in something, you know, small that was work related, and um, you know, and then it was all personal. And yes, at that point in time, um, I had um, let him know that if this is going to continue. Um, I would need to have our human resources or our village manager involved. Did you sit down with human resources and Mr. Kaczynski uh, on or about May 4th? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And who is your HR person? Our uh, human resources is Lisa Malone. Okay. So it's you, Lisa, and the defendant sitting down at this meeting? That is correct. All right. At that time, did you confront him with his specific actions that caused you concern? Yes. And um, did you convey to him how those actions made you uncomfortable or how you, whatever you felt about them? Yes. And um, was he defensive or confrontational at all during this meeting? Not at all. He actually said he would comply okay. and in writing as well. And did you, when you walked out of that meeting, how did you think things would go going forward? I, I was actually relieved that he was just like, okay, everything's going to be good. I will comply. Um, I'm sorry, you know, if things happened. And he actually wrote an email of what he wouldn't do in the future. And at the time of this meeting with Lisa's assistance, did you and him come up with some guidelines to prevent these uncomfortable situations from occurring in the future? Yes, and, and he actually um, bullet pointed what he was, was going to do to make sure that these things, it wouldn't be uncomfortable moving forward. Okay. Ms. Soldier, I need to take just a second. We just need to take a quick breather no, while we change paper, right? No, it's not well, paper, it's my battery. Oh, okay. <laughs> I need that too. <laughs> this lady works the hardest of any of us in the courtroom, folks, and whenever she says that she needs to address something, we're going to do it. And it was decided that um, he would do um, what he had outlined to do and keep things professional moving forward. And um, did he agree to limit how often he would be stopping by the office? I don't remember if it was at that point that he did. Um, I just know that um, he would jog through the building several times and he that was one of his bullet points that he would not jog through the building and go through go through the building. So after it was agreed that he would come in less frequently, did he abide by that? No. Um, let's talk about the next week essentially, May 8th. About how many times did he come in that week? I would say approximately three. And were those any of those court nights? <clears throat> no. So in those instances where he stopped by, what would happen? Um, many times um, he would say that, oh, I brought some reading material in. I'm just going to um, watch and observe what you're doing. Um, his desk was essentially um, behind my desk. We shared the same office, and he would just basically sit there and watch me. And 
how long are we talking here? Is this, you know, five minutes or something different? Um, each time, uh, um, he may have he may have stopped in and said, okay, I'm stopping in for five minutes, and then I got to run and do whatever. Or he may say, um, I'm going to sit here for a while and observe. Or he may... Um, bring up something, you know, a work-related topic or a non-work-related topic and then talk. So each time it wasn't a set amount of time. I mean, it could be as quick as five minutes or it could be as long as 45 minutes. And um, was he doing anything of concern other than staring at you? Um, the, the one time that he had um, done so, um, he had, um, we were going over something that he wanted to see on my computer, and I, I apologize, I don't remember what it was, but we were going over something um, that he wanted to see how I did it on the computer. And he sat, this is now directly behind me, and if I can give, like, feet-wise, it was probably about as uh, far back as this uh, wall here, this small wall. Um, and he sat um, and literally had a notepad, and he sat and he tapped that notepad with his pen and made cat noises to the point where I was very uncomfortable and made two excuses to uh, leave the room, come back. He continued. I, then I finally had left um, to go down to our uh, PD. That was my next excuse. What do you mean by cat noises? He would literally demonstrate how a cat sounds. He would he would meow. Okay. Uh, was that done with his mouth or with something else? Um, with his with his mouth is what he was doing it with. He did okay. have stuffed cats in our office that um, he had that with, but he those days or that day I should say is the day he was actually him himself was meowing. And was that unusual? Um, I've seen it before, um, but it's, he's literally never sat in front of me and sat approximately yay feet away from me and sat and, and meowed. He's done it before. I've seen it um, previous employment, and I've seen it uh, outside of my office, yes. Okay. Um, did you have a one-year review? I guess that's what you're saying. I did, and that was... Um, Right around the May 16 date, I, um, you know, maybe it was right on May 16th. I don't know, but it was, it was in the middle of May. Now, as an employee of Fox Crossing, is it typical to have your one-year review at one year or a different time? If you know, um, it, it, we had reviews mm -hmm. where um, in the fall. And I, I apologize, I, I don't know when, but in the fall, all the department heads from Village of Fox Crossing, they have a um, basically a spreadsheet, and, and it's a number system and how they evaluate um, their employees in their department. So for this one, and, and I didn't know, I didn't know if it was common or not common. I didn't know it was my first review, and I did not know that they did, the rest of the building did theirs in fall. Did you ultimately go back to Lisa Malone or other administration personnel to address these uh, incidents? Yes. Okay. As a result, uh, do you know if Mr. Kaczynski met with the administration on or about June 8th of 2017? Yes. And were you at all part of that meeting? Yes, after um, they had sp spoke with Mr. Kaczynski, um, the attorney, as well as um, the village manager. Um, and then I came in afterwards because Mr. Kaczynski had asked if I could appear at that meeting. And what was the point of you coming in? The point of me was he actually sat and he, again, oh, I'm sorry, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't mean to make you feel uncomfortable. Now I know what I'm doing wrong. And it was all explained to him personally from me of why I was uncomfortable, what he was doing. Um, and I had I went down the list, and he had sat and told our administrator as well as our village attorney that he understood up until when we thought everything was clear, and he said, well, I need to have another meeting with Mandy. Did anyone else present do anything when he indicated, I'm going to have another meeting with Mandy? Um, I looked over at uh, the village attorney and um, 
in my opinion, in my words, um, he was very upset and asked Mr. Kaczynski what he did not understand that to keep things professional, um, you, there is no point for another meeting. Now, at this meeting, was it conveyed to the defendant that no personal non-work communications would be tolerated? Yes, that's correct. And did he appear to find that acceptable? He did, yes. Okay. And I just want to know, what do, what do non-personal um, work-focused communications look like to you in the, in the matter of your employment with the judge of Fox Crossing? I'm pretty much, um, in my opinion, um, 90 to 95 percent of his emails were were not work related. It was all building office rapport. Right. What I'm asking is, in in an ideal world where this is a professional environment, would you be able to function 100 percent in your capacity as court manager? Absolutely. Would it detract at all from your performance as court manager? No. Okay. Um, now, after this meeting, did things get better? No. Okay. Um, did his presence at the municipal building on random days, not court days, increase or decrease? Uh, increased. Okay. And did he indicate why he was coming to the municipal building in these instances? Um, in his email, um, he would email and tell me that he was coming. Um, so he would say, for example, I will be there at 2.30 to do a pulse check is what he would say to me. And during those uh, notices, in, in you receiving those notices, did you ultimately come to request agendas for these meetings? I did um, because I thought after um, I, I spoke with him, um, HR spoke with him, our village administrator, and now our village attorney, and he was still persistent. I had to come in, had to have these meetings, he had to see me. I had then said to him, I thought, well, how, how else can I get around these personal meetings? How else can I get around not having him come in several times a week? So I had just asked, um, Judge, can we, is there any way that we can have an agenda? Can you let me know what we're going to be talking about? And in receiving a variety of those, of those agendas, did he uh, continue to pursue uh, personal rapport issues or personal relationship issues with you? Yes. Now, during this time frame that we're talking about, early summer of 2017, uh, do you recall what email address uh, Mr. Kaczynski was using on a regular basis? Yes, it was his personal email. Okay. And did he have an electronic signature attached to most of those emails as well, indicating it was from Len Kaczynski? Um, he had a, a, a basically a signature block that had his name, that he was the municipal judge, and um, just a few other personal items after that, and I believe the Fox Crossing um, emblem. Okay, and um, you said a couple other items. Was one of them usually an inspirational quote? An inspirational quote, yes. So let's start with some of these emails. I want to hand you State's Exhibit Number 2. Do you recognize this exhibit? Yes. What is it? Um, it is an email to me wishing my husband a, a happy Father's Day. And who is it from? It is from Len Kaczynski. And what's the subject line of that email? The subject line is rule violation. And can you read the entirety of that email? I know it's a short one. Um, he states, Mandy, I realize that this email violates every principle we've talked about regarding office conduct the last few weeks, but I am sending it anyway. Feel free to report me to HR. I feel spunky this morning. Happy Father's Day to your husband, Doug. Thank you. How did you feel when you read this email? I, I, I was just kind of, I, I felt, I thought we talked about things over and over and over and over at this point in time, and it continues. In reading that email, did you believe he would abide by your wishes to keep things professional? I was hoping so, but no. 
is that copy of that email a true and accurate uh, representation of an email you received from Len Kaczynski? That is correct. Um, has it been altered in any way that you can tell? Not that I can see, no. I would ask uh, to move Exhibit 2 into evidence and permission to publish it to the jury. No objection. And for the record, for experience, I would stipulate that all of the emails are accurate copies of the emails received, so we don't have to keep repeating that. Exhibit 1 has not been discussed. Exhibit 2 has been offered and is received and may be published. Published, ladies and gentlemen, means it will be shown to you. And Attorney Folger, I believe, has a copy of the email that she is going to provide each of you to bring about the manner of that publication. Take one. I'm correct. I'm sorry. I didn't take one. I'm correct. No. That's what you meant? Okay. I have the same thing. Okay. I think primarily everyone's done, so I'm going to continue. Going and to if you'd like, I can collect all of those. I would ask that, um, that the Exhibit 2, now that everyone has had a chance to review it, please be collected. Um, copies could be returned to Attorney Folger, please. And then Exhibit 2. Um, do you have an Exhibit table right up there? <coughs> yes. Okay, it yes. would be left on the Exhibit table, please. Unless you, you need it further with Ms. Uh, with, with Bartell. Ms. Bartell. Thank okay, thank you. Mandy, I'm now handing you Exhibit number 3. Do you recognize this document? Yes. And what is that document? Um, it's an email, again, from Friday, June 16th, with a few subjects on it. And can you read items two through six, please? The, the on, on here? Yes, in okay. the content of the... Number two... Um, and Sue was the gal that had retired before myself, but number two, Sue was a couple years younger than me, but it was almost a parent-child relationship rather than the adult to adult. I believe that the latter character characterized our relationship during the first your first ten months. Number three, I did not look forward to court because Sue was there. As I told you shortly after I was out of the hospital at other times, I looked forward to seeing you on court nights because you inspired me to be more enthusiastic about municipal court and do a better job. Number four, as you know, I considered Sue a B and you as an A. Number, excuse me, number five, uh, Sue did not keep me as well informed as you did or send me paperwork between court sessions to speed up our processing time. Number six, Sue never told me her birthday or anniversary date with Pat, so I was never able to give her a card on, these, on this occasion. Now, who is this email from? This is from Len Kishinsky. And who is it to? Myself. And you already indicated it was on June 16th. Is that after the 
rule violation email? Yes. Now, how did you feel reading that phrase, I considered Sue a B and you as an A? I, I was take I was taken back by the by the email in entirety. I, I I I couldn't believe he was actually stating um, these bullet points. Okay. I am going to move on. Then I'm going to hand you Exhibit, I believe four. hold on to the exhibits that I have not yet moved into evidence. This is Exhibit 4. Do you recognize this document? Yes. And what is it? Um, an, an email from Len Kaczynski on June 22nd. And who is it to? It's to myself. And can you read the content of that email? Mandy, I am in a good mood and not influenced by steroids. Perhaps we should have a beer or wine summit in the next week on Tuesday or later at holidays to discuss the relationship issue. I think there's major problems we have. I do not want out of office meetings on a regular basis. I will consider other forum or location. I have no objection to any meeting being re recorded. I would prefer that no other person be present other than perhaps Doug. This could be the occasion to end the strict restrictions of non-work related discussions and replace it with the use of respect and common sense. That is all dependent upon you not being uncomfortable with me as your supervisor. Think about it and let me know by Monday. Did you feel that his request for an out of office Beer and wine summit was appropriate in light of what was going on? In light of what was going on, absolutely not. Now, I do want to jump all the way to July 2nd of 2017. Did you have email contact with Mr. Kaczynski over a letter he believed was sent to your mother? Uh, yes. And um, did he, who did he indicate sent a letter to your mother? He had stated um, he had sent a letter to my mother. Uh, and did he share with you a copy of that letter? He did, yes. Okay. Now, I want to hand you State's Exhibit Number 5. It has two parts to it. Sorry, I'm actually handing you exhibit number nine. Sorry to go out of order. <laughs> Do you recognize uh, both of those attachments on that exhibit? Yes. And um, what is that first uh, exhibit, the first part of that exhibit? Um, he was um, sending me an email with the subject line of letter to B. Strobel. Um, and then he was um, speaking about, um, I just need one minute to scan this over. In, in here, he's just speaking that he had sent my mom the letter. He had um, given me a copy of the letter. He's just letting me know that in the letter that he chose to send to my mom was praising me highly. Um, 
and, that, and the fact that he did not want uh, third parties um, present um, while he had these meetings. Can you read on that email portion of it the uh, paragraph that begins, I wish? I wish you would show greater commitment to normalcy in the office when I am there. Our personal and professional relationship needs repair. This will not occur by giving me the silent treatment. Men hate that. Now within that email as well, does he reference the term stalking in any way? Yes, in the first paragraph. And does he also uh, reference uh, stalking in any way within your mother's letter, if you can tell that? Yes. So in this instance, he is contacting your family about this, this uh, dispute, is that correct? That's correct. Did you provide him with your mom's address? I did not. As far as you know, is your mom's address available on Facebook? It's, it is not, as far as I know. How did this make you feel? I just thought he's now he's taken it to another level that he's um, tracking down my family because he couldn't do do so electronically. Now he had to send her a paper letter. Did was it your uh, assessment that he was dialing back his non-work communications or something else? I thought this was a huge step forward. Now he is including my family and uh, finding my family and sending them letters. On July 6th of 2017, did you receive an email from Len Kaczynski related to uh, normalization? I believe so, yes. I'm handing you state's exhibit number eight. Is this that email? Yes. Now, is one of the lines in there that I'll have you read related to normalization? Read the first two lines of the subject, or not of the subject, but of the content of that email, please. On the first page where he had. Where it begins with Mandy. Okay. Mandy, if I did not make myself clear enough yesterday and the last two weeks, normalization is going to happen and happen now. Thank no. That's, that's all I need. Okay. Does he reference um, his health at this, uh, in the second paragraph as well? Yes. And how does he reference that? Um, he said, per yesterday's doctor visit, my blood pressure is back up again. The reason is environmental. Enough is enough. How did you read the tone of that email? I, I took it as, as time's going on and I'm asking things to be professional. Um, He's, he's getting mad that, it, that he does not have this personal relationship with me is where, the, where this is going. July 17th of 2017, reworking that day? Yes. And at that time, was, it, uh, was there any policy in place as far as meetings between the two of you? Um, 
With our meetings, yes. Our, our meetings were, um, at that point in time, our uh, human resources director or our village manager would always be present at these meetings. Okay. And um, on July 17, 2017, did you know of any planned meeting with Mr. Kaczynski? I, I mean, he would say he's having a meeting. I would have to refresh my memory to know on that specific date if he had stated he wants a meeting. Did he come into the office on that date? I believe so, yes. And um, if you were called, did you expect to see him? If he did not email me, no. Because okay. he would always e email me and tell me he's coming in. How did things go during that? <clears throat> Um, that was a, a day that he, um, our, our village manager and our HR were not present or I should say not aware um, that he was uh, coming in um, because they wanted to be present um, because of what was all going on. They wanted to be present. Um, they were not present. Um, he had walked in and um, how my desk is is Basically, I have a, um, a short wall, so we can say maybe about this height. I have my court manager sign right here, as well as some pictures from my kids, which I rotate all the time underneath. Um, he had actually uh, physically um, got up, went over the desk, and asked me, if, are you afraid of me now? Because I was sitting there, and I was by myself. And he sat there and asked me if I was afraid, because nobody else was around. the volume level of his voice when he said that? He, he was whispering. Was your office service window open at the time? Yes. How did you react at that time? I was, in, I was in shock that he was actually leaning over, knocking my things over, knocking my kids' pictures over, and asking me if I was actually afraid of him and in my face. Now, this is just really court procedure here. You indicated the height of your desk, and it's really not of much significance today, but you indicated it was about the height of the top of the witness stand. Is that accurate? I would, I would say approximately that height, yes. Did you report this incident to anyone? I did. Who did you report it to? Um, I believe I reported both to our human resources and our village manager. Now, a couple days later on July 20th, 2017, did you have court that night? Yes. And um, did you have someone present with you during that entire incident? Yes. Okay. Do you recall who it was? I, I believe it was Lisa, but I, I couldn't be certain. Okay. Um, do you recall if the defendant left the building before you could go back into the office area? On, on, on the 20th? Yes. Um, yes, he left the courtroom to go back to our office um, before I had went back to the office, yes. And did you ultimately move back into the office once court was done? Yes. Did you find anything when you went into the office? Um, yes, so when you walk in from the courtroom, you basically walk through a little area like that to get to my desk, and his desk is right there. And um, he had left um, a fox crossing envelope um, that he had gotten, I believe, his check stub from, um, and he had uh, smeared blood all over the envelope. States Exhibit 11. Do you recognize that? Yes. Is that the envelope that you were speaking of? Yes. Was it obvious to you that it was blood on there? Yes. Did you think it could be anything else? No. Okay. Is that an accurate representation of how it looks when you came upon it? Absolutely, yes. Okay. I would move that Exhibit 11 into evidence and ask permission to publish that to the jury. Because if Exhibit 11 is received and it may be published, are you using the same mechanism for publication we discussed a moment ago? Yes. All right. Please take your time. Thank you.
Ms. Bartel, what was your reaction to that? Again, it was, I, I was just astounded. It was just one more thing. I, I, I couldn't believe that he was actually leaving bodily fluids on an envelope in our shared office. And about how many days was it after the are you afraid incident that this occurred? Um, it was only a few days after that. I, three to, I, I believe three. And later that evening, did you get an email from the defendant? Yes. And if the jury wants to pass those if photos could, down, maybe I'll like, pass them all down toward Pam, if you could, please, ladies and gentlemen, so they may be collected. I'm handing you Exhibit 12. Do you recognize that document? Yes. What is it? Um, an email sent from Mr. Kaczynski to myself July 20th at 837. And I'd like to go through some of those uh, statements made within that email. Can you please read the first paragraph? Mandy, I do not like court nights like tonight. Effective interperson, interpersonal communication does not need a babysitter from administration. Malone may say she just sits there and listens, but we both know if anybody says anything she does not like, she will either interject or write it in her notepad for her report to Sturgill. Can you please read the paragraph that begins with in short? In short, if you want to restore a happy workplace, the first step is to stand on your own and not use the administration as a crutch. If Noel Facebook overposter Kaczynski acted like this, acted like that with her corporate bigwigs, she would not even not even close to as successful not even to be as close as, it, as successful as she has been. I can overlook what I consider poor judgment in handling a situation. I cannot tolerate a weakling unwilling to have free and open discussions with the boss or insubordination. Can you finish by reading the last two paragraphs? The last two paragraphs start with, Barb will, will probably be mad as hell if she breaks into my email and reads this, but I think you're worth the effort and the risk. The real enemy is the administration that wants to manipulate the situation for their own purposes. I skipped out real fast just to send Malone another message, but have a good weekend. I regret feeling obligated to make things a bit difficult by ordering you out of the office. I noticed you did not cry. In that last paragraph with I skipped out real fast, does he also interject uh, emoticons? Yes. That is correct. Um, and can, I know you're probably not an expert on it, but can you tell the jury what an emoticon generally is? Basically like an, an emoji if it's a smiling face, a happy face, a sad face, so an emoji. And what was the emoji or emoticon after I skipped out real fast just to send Malone another message? Um, he has a, and I honestly, I don't know what it means. Um, he has a... Um, an open-faced V this way, two colons, which is probably like, a, I would think like a mad face, where it has like a V, um, and then has two dots and a P, which I would think either is smiling or smiling with your tongue out, or that's my assumption of what he had put on here. And is there an emoticon after I noticed you did not cry? Yes, he put a sad face um, with a tear coming down it. Who's Barb? Barb, in this email, Barb is referring to his wife. Now, this is on the same night you find the envelope? Yes. How did that all make you feel? Uh, again, I mean, just one one more thing. I, I was just taken back. I, I, I guess I, I was just in shock. I couldn't believe, and at this point where I'm starting to get nervous, what, what is he going to do next was what was always in the back of my mind. What is next? Now, 
Does anything happen on July 24th that you can recall? Um, I, I believe, are you referring to the meet, uh, the village board meeting? Is that, I, is that what you recall? Because there's a couple dates in between at the end of July, but yes, at, um, I believe it was July 24th, and um, there was a village board meeting um, that Mr. Uh, Kaczynski sat in on and um, explained to the village board as well as the village president um, of his thought of what was going on. And you weren't present during that? I was not present, no. Did he reach out to you after that meeting? He did. Um, less than 24 hours later, he was back in our office. And did he uh, convey what uh, had happened at that meeting? Yes, he had told me um, how he explained it to me was he had explained to the village what he was doing, his behavior, um, and I don't want to quote, but I believe each of the village uh, board members, including the president, had asked him to stop his behavior towards me and stop doing what he was doing. Was there another meeting between you and Mr. Kaczynski on July 26th then? Yes. And. Did anyone else sit in on that meeting? Yes, and again, our, our, our village administrator or our human resources always was present um, when Mr. Kaczynski was around. And yes, he had another meeting, a follow-up, regarding what had happened in the board meeting. Who else was present during that meeting? It was Jeff Sturgill at that time, our village administrator. Now, at any point, did you leave the meeting and leave the two of them alone? Yes, I was in the meeting. Uh, Mr. Kaczynski had called them another meeting once again, and um, I was in the meeting for approximately maybe 10, 15 minutes. I exited my back office and went back to work, and Mr. Sturgill and Mr. Kaczynski continued the meeting. And at some point, uh, did the two of them exit that meeting? Yes. Did. Mr. Kaczynski do anything at that point? Mr. Uh, Kaczynski came out first um, in, from my back office. Um, he leaned over my desk. He gave me a homemade, on his own stationary, white flag. Um, and it was basically that I defeated him, even though I didn't have anything to do with the village board. Um, he handed me this on a pencil and stationary. And I, I can't remember what he had all stated, but basically that I defeated him. Here's here's my white flag. Would you agree that things uh, between the two of you slowed down a bit throughout the month of August? Yes, and my reasoning for that is because I was I have only a short bit of vacation, but I use a lot of it in August of 2017. So if we move into 20, or, sorry, September 2017, um, did you start getting more emails from Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. And did you receive an email uh, from him on September 10th regarding whitepages.com? Yes. States Exhibit number 14. Is this the email that you are referring to? Yes. And uh, what is the nature of this email? Um, this week's technology tip is what the subject line is. And again, who sent that message? Mr. Kaczynski. And who's, uh, who received that message? Myself. Okay. And do you can you tell me, based on what you're reviewing there, um, at, on what day of the week it was, what time it was? Um, it states on here Sunday, September 10th at 9.04 p.m. All right. Um, what did you take away from this email as far as the purpose of this email? Um, my thought on this whole email is because um, we were basically starting to get afraid of him. My family was afraid of him that he actually took that extra step to go track her down um, 
by paper copy. Um, and now he's actually, because we were afraid of him and he was explaining here, telling me that I should tell my mom um, that he used white pages to track her down and it's free and nobody should be um, uh, nervous about how he found it. Can you read the very last two, I'm sorry, last three sentences starting with she really? She really has no reason to fear me, nor do you. Hope you all, hope you have or will have a good weekend. The weather is great. I'm sorry, does it say weekend? A workout, I'm sorry, I apologize. So it says hope you will, you have or will have a good workout? Yes. Okay. Speaking of September, when is your wedding anniversary? My wedding anniversary is September 13th. Okay. Did you receive communications from Mr. Kaczynski regarding your wedding anniversary that September? Yes. And, he had, I'm sorry? Oh, he had sent an email about it. And why, why did he send the email? What, what was the purpose of that email? He sent an email um, acknowledging that it was my wedding anniversary and that he would like to know if he could um, come in and drop me off a homemade card. And did you respond to that? I did. What did you tell him? I, I basically I told him, no, thank you. Please do not send me any anniversary cards. Now I want to go into October. <laughs> At this point now, through September into October, um, are you having more or less contact with Mr. Kaczynski, specifically having to do with uh, a personal relationship? He he would actually increase it. I mean, he would he was there sometimes three times a week. Um, sometimes I could get and, and and I don't want to be incorrect, but sometimes I could get upwards of ten emails in a day. I mean, it was it was constant. Did any of this contact deal with office decor uh, or your person on your personal desk area? Yes. What did that contact consist of? He uh, sent me an email, and he had told me uh, what I could have in my desk. He bullet bullet pointed it all out. He had stated. Um, without seeing the email, but it was somewhere along the lines if I could have one wedding picture, I could have um, two kids' projects, I could have two projects from one kid or um, one project from each of the kids. Um, and he went down the line of all the specific things, the pictures that I could have up in my office as well as um, if I wanted to do anything political, I could. If I wanted to support any uh, sports teams, I could. But he was specific on what I could hang up as far as wedding pictures and other photos of my family. Now, where you keep those items on your desk or at the time where you kept those items <coughs> on your desk, was it uh, very visible from the customer service window? I would say I ha at that time I had a, um, a, a big filing cabinet and I had, a, I'll say, about four pictures up there of my family. So we, possibly yes, if you're, how you're standing in the window. Sure. Now what was your reaction to this new office rule? I actually, I, 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 I'll be honest with you, I started crying. I thought, how am I here 40 hours a week? And now I can't have pictures of my family, none were, which were distasteful. I did have a wedding photo up there. Um, I did have school pictures of my kids. Um, and nothing, absolutely nothing was distasteful that was on, in my office. Now, I'm curious at this point, if this whole situation hadn't been going on, if... Back in April, he had agreed to abide by that work-only, work-focused relationship. Would you have reacted this way even if he disagreed with the rule? I, I wouldn't have reacted that way, no, but I, I guess I would have been confused on why he, suddenly he's bringing it up now after I've been there a year and a half. But I would have not have reacted the way I did because the way I reacted, it was just one more thing. And you couldn't view that in a vacuum? Meaning? Meaning I, you couldn't isolate that one email? And, and no, because things just kept happening and, and more and more and more. And it, it, it's just the, 
abundance of things that had taken place. I want to talk about November 3rd, 2017. What, if anything, happened on that date? Um, I got to work. Um, again, I, I got another email from Mr. Kaczynski. Um, at this point in time, um, he sent an email, and um, at the bottom of the email, um, he told me that there's going to be fire and fury in our municipal building. Um, and the next line after that is, myself, I better be psychologically prepared for what's going to take place. And then there was other contents in the email, but that is the scary part of the email. I'm handing you Exhibit 19. Is this the email you're referring to? Yes. And who is it sent by? Mr. Kaczynski. And who is the recipient? Myself. And I'm sorry, just for my purposes of record keeping, what number is that? That is 19. Thank you. Now, you indicated the ending of it uh, concerned you greatly. Can you read, though, the first paragraph? The first paragraph states, Mandy, judges are taught to leave situations when their emotions are in danger of getting out of control. The continued surveillance by the administration evokes those emotions, so I left rather abruptly. The non-work-related conversations between you and coworkers that the administration does not want me to engage in was also disturbing, but I chose not to interfere as I believe it is actually a good thing with reasonable limits. I did want to tell you I appreciated your work in having everything ready for court and for how court was conducted. Prior to November 3rd, did you receive a letter of reprimand from Mr. Kaczynski? Yes, at the end of October. And does he reference uh, that letter of reprimand at all? In this, in this email on November 3rd? Yes. Just need one second. Yes, in the third paragraph, yes. And sorry to keep jumping back and forth, but that letter of rep reprimand back on a, in October was that for job-related performance? No. Do you recall what I, it was like? There were several of them, so I, I don't recall the October, what it was, what the contents in that specific month was for. But do you recall that it wasn't work performance? I believe yes. Does this email, Actually, why don't you read the paragraph that starts with, I also wanted. I also wanted to reassure you that the letter of reprimand in, per, in um, parentheses LOR was more than just a way of documenting things to justify more severe sanctions for future workplace incidents. Uh, LOR is also meant to be teaching tool to catch your attention. I hope you do not, ha I hope I do not have to write more of them. Can you read the rest of the email, please? I really think we need to have a serious discussion about the future. However, I am not going to attempt it as long as the surveillance continues. Both of us have done things that endanger, angered each other, other angered each other this year. In my opinion, none of the incidents that actually occurred or accurately described were so severe that the reconciliation for a happy long-term workplace rapport is impossible but it will require each of us to eat some crow. See the newspaper article I left on my desk. By this time next week, some things are going to happen that will cause a lot of fire and fury at the municipal building. No, I'm not resigning. Just be psychologically prepared. Have a good weekend. P.S. I prefer this not be forwarded, but it is up to your own good judgment. I think that our food is here. Can we take a breather? Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to use your time efficiently. We also want to be kind to you. Um, I'm going to propose we take about a half hour, 35 minute lunch, unless you want longer. Can you kind of take a poll among yourselves how long you would like for lunch, and then we'll try and accommodate that? Do you want longer than 35 minutes? I'm not going to be upset if you do. It would appear everybody wants to forge ahead.
Let's reconvene at quarter to twelve or quarter to one, which will give us about a little bit longer than thirty-five minutes for lunch. Um, anything further we need to address before we excuse the jury? No. Thank all right. You. All